Okay, here we are, an absolutely stunning sunny day in Larchmont, New York, getting ready to preview our sale. Coming up on Sunday, September the 8th, sale starts at 10 a.m., three internet platforms, so you can be live on the internet, but you've got to come here and see this car. We're going to start with this. This is a 2004 Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. One owner. One owner, hard and soft top. Look at the engine, you can eat your dinner off that. Obviously it didn't belong to me. The owner took care of it, it was 16 and a half thousand miles on it now. He purchased it at Porsche in Greenwich. Last service at Porsche in Greenwich at 15,000 miles. Hardly a scratch on it. Could do it a little buffing up. Nice leather interior, six, six speed manual shift. Inside here, clean as a whistle as well. It's a hard top, soft top. This is the glass screen that goes between. Underneath here, you have your spare tire, etc. Spotless, never used, and the tools. A great car, come here. I believe it's 20 to 30,000 estimate. Bring whoever you want to test it out. We believe it is in excellent, excellent shape. I have driven a slice. Okay, without further ado, let's bring you inside and show you we have a paella of items this sale. Not a monster load, but a good load. Nice steady stuff. Okay, here we are for the toy collectors. This is a wonderful, this is 11 boxes of Voltron 2. It's a matchbox, but I believe it was made in Japan. But all the robots still in the original boxes. This box here is the original box that it actually came in too. So a great, great investment opportunity there. To the left of this or to the right, depending on where you're from, we have this beautiful, absolutely wonderful marble sculpture by an artist called Carlo Pitaluga, Italian. 19th century, wonderful, look at the patina on that. Below this, Irish table, wonderfully carved. Look at the ram's head, nice heavy to it. Top the way it sits on the feet. Probably end up in Ireland with a still take this top off and put a slate top on it, but really beautiful carving. Probably 19th century, late 19th century. You'd like it to be earlier, but it's still wonderful. Don't want to be looking for excuses to diss it. Below this, a vintage carpet, a newer carpet, but handmade, nice in a sort of Serapi Hiraz, Hira, Hiraz style. Right here, we have one of, I believe, three bronze Erte sculptures. These are all estimated 1,015 each. You'll notice them as we move along. Sitting atop, one of a pair of beautiful rosewood four drawer chests. Beautiful patina, wonderful grain. Nice pair of leather. Danish chairs here. In the center, in good condition, George Nelson for Herman Miller, four drawer commode. As always, we have a Steinway in the sale. This one in a Louis XV style case, nicely carved. It's uh, a Model M, serial number 259781, plays well. It has a player piano system attached to it, it can be removed, but there is a player piano system in it. This harp is in our next sale, it just came in yesterday. It belonged to uh, Stitch Henderson, who was uh, Johnny Carson's band leader, the founder of New York Pop. So the next sale we have is the state. Anyway, into the main room. We've got lots of appraisals to do, so I'm going to fly through this. Right here we have this uh, beautiful bronze and sort of mirrored glass top table, three piece. Nice quality. And here, sitting on top of this wonderful Chesterfield sofa, which we have two leather Chesterfield sofas, we have two instruments. This one here is a Martin guitar. Wonderful, wonderful shape. Go to clarkeny.com to view the more. This just came in two days ago. The Irish love these. Nice long neck on it, a bit like myself. It's a tenor banjo, four string, and it's by Vega. Wonderful condition in the original hard case. The old Murphys are the Irish. The, I shouldn't be saying that's not good, but I'm Irish, so I can say it. We'll love that, as will the diddly eye die players. Anyway, in here, as you can see, we've got a Sev's demi tasse set, small sculpt, bronze sculptures, two celestial globes on stands there. We've got Ancoma pottery. Moving along here, we have Mizen, <coughs> we have Minton, we have Sev's. We have a wonderful pair of RS Prussia portrait plates, rare. This I'm here, I believe is Seb's. Below this we have clock garniture sets, bronze clocks. And in the back here, hidden, but I've got to highlight it because it's extremely rare. This is an actually original Gustav Stickley mantle clock. Look at the lovely patina on that, hardly touched. Rare, I believe this is estimated two to four thousand. 
we have this uh, bronze dog. Here, unsigned, but very, very nice, uh, nicely done. Sculpture of an African-American, probably plaster, patinated plaster. Okay, it seems we have yadros all the time. Okay, we've got a nice little tray lot here of micro mosaic. This little sculpture is by, the Will would probably deal with it, Abraham Tobias. We have uh, Lalique France over here. And we have lots of uh, Ankama pottery and Native American style stuff. Here we have this um, Cato wall unit. Nice big unit, has a stand, it has the wall units, wall brackets, lots of pieces. We have this, this is actually interesting. This is probably Milo Bauman, it's not the Aldo Tour. Milo Bauman table, we have these Plycraft chairs. Nice Art Deco rolling bar there. Rolling like me, rolling along. This might be Gilbert Rohde, sort of a skyscraper style desk cabinet. We have an original pair of LC chairs here, at Charles Ames. We have a wonderful reverse painted shade here. This came from Queens. Could be Handel or one of those, but nice big size. Nice sort of fluting on the glass. Here's the Aldo Tura table, in wonderful condition with the uh, goat skin top. It has one big leaf signed. Nice, nice, beautiful color. And on top this, we have two pieces by whoever this is. It's unsigned, but my guess might be Michael Coffey, as you'll see more when you see the top on stand. This came from a New York City estate. Here we have a set of six of these chairs and the yeah, it just slipped through me now, but I'll, it'll dawn on me soon who did those. They're like scissor chairs. Here we have a wonderful wall unit. It's actually all attached on stand. This came from Bedford, I believe. And here, Art Deco used to be rare to find these, but I don't know how hot they'll be now. This is an old Gilbert Rohde desk with the fabric or the leather upholstery on the side. Slightly scuffed up, it can be, can be done. For your antiques, this is one of my favorite pieces here. I love these. This is a nice campaign chest. Beautiful original patina, two-piece, nice brass. As you like to find it, here we have a uh, nice 19th century leather top desk with the writing pullouts on the sides. More rosewood furniture here. This is a Baker commode here, Georgian style. Antique pedestal. Back to the used furniture, we have a nice lot of stickly Audi. We have this wonderful etagere. We have this Italiano burl of walnut and lacquered. Nice serpentine front cabinet. Once again, wonderful patina. Moving along, we have lots of chandeliers in the sale. This carpet below this Victorian desk here is actually a nice carpet. We have lots of nice carpets, so check it out in case I miss them. This carpet here is a lot of wear, but sort of Kazakh style, good age. Over here, not the hottest of stuff at the moment, but an absolutely wonderfully carved set of chairs. Look at that, the ball and cloth feet carved all over. Right in the middle of it there, big center pedestal table, big large table, sitting atop a big carpet. Antique bookcase, open front. We have another little Steinway here. We even have a Steinway in for our next sale. In front of that Steinway, another piece I really like is this Italian trestle table, just as you like. You can see the wear from where the feet were on it and wonderful patina. Look there where the kids were playing with the knife and hacked it away years ago. On top, this is nice. This came in while I was on vacation just last two weeks in France. So I have got my glasses, so I can't really tell you who it is, but once again, go to the site. It's a nice model ship. Okay, we have this Hitchcock style bedroom set. It's a huge set. Chest, vanity, mirrors, desks, etagers, trunks, the whole lot, one lot. Everything estimated three to five hundred. But what a great load for a kid's room. Okay, we have console tables. Here we have, we have a pair of these uh, Corbusier design chair settees, as we also have a pair of chairs now. They're not signed casino, but they are the best of quality. This is like a hide, wonderful leather, very comfortable, not like those cheapo newer ones. The family bought it in the 80s or something like that off Palazzetti, so I think they're very nice. We have this boomerang lacquer table here. Below here, a Saruk carpet. Nice demi lune console. We have lots of wrought iron furniture. 
We have three wonderful Handel lamps in the sale. Just look at the size of this one and look at the tree trunk base. Absolutely great. Looks like it's a wonderful shape, wonderful patina. The other one is over here. Wow, I'm spotting stuff as I move along here from a Greenwich where the Porsche came from. We have this uh, Max Kuhn table. Nice silver leaf with the decoration on it. Comes with this little one, which I don't know whether that was the top originally, but the two of them are together as one lot, so. Then we have this Roche Beaubois settee. Sectional, just as comfortable as you want it. Lucite table, Lucite coffee table here. This is a large bronze fountain in the, you know, after Matthew Moore, Maturin Moreau. Nice quality reproduction, but definitely a repro, probably 50 or 60 years old. For our dog lovers, we have that dog. Ah, I'm caught again. We put down the designer on this, but it's all signed. A wonderful bronze bird form lamp. Go online, we have that there. Unless you're all knowledgeable dealers, you'll already know what it is. Here we have a Mastercraft, lacquered and brass inlaid cabinet. Nice Handel lamp on top of it. Here's some of the, uh, we have a Noguchi table there. We have more Corbusier chairs. We're coming to the finish line here. This came in three days ago, and at first I thought, oh wow, a nice, just a rare Finn's Dual Chieftain chair. But I believe this was made in the 90s for Victoria's Secret up in Chicago by a company called Interiors Craft. But a wonderful, wonderful chair. Very hard to tell the difference. Great patina, as you can see. This came with a Jean Prouvé chair. It's somewhere around, I've missed it. We have Louis Vuitton. And here we have this abstract sculpture. This came from a local estate, nearly broke my neck digging it out of the garden, but we got it out. I believe the artist is Herman Wyman. Nice big size, great. Sculpture is sort of hot, so it's nice to have. We have our usual cut glass stemware. Am I missing anything? Lots of chandeliers. And bear in mind, next sale is very interesting. We have the uh, stretch load that came in yesterday, so we'll be, up we'll be uploading it soon. And without further ado, I'm going to say thank you. See you here Sunday, www.clarkeny. Sale starts at 10 a.m. Previews three days from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. See you then. Thank you. Hi, Will Schweller here to highlight some of the fine art lots in Clark Auctions' September 8th sale. I'd like to start with this important portrait by John Wollaston of Captain Thomas Noel from the English Royal Navy. This work dates from probably 1745 uh, and is an important example of American colonial painting. Wollaston is probably one of the more influential English painters to come to the colonies. He introduced the Rococo style to American painting. Here we see Noel in three-quarter pose, posing with his frigate ship, the Princess Louisa. This work comes out of a Philadelphia collection with a lot of the other English and colonial portraits and paintings in this sale and has a ten dollars to $15,000 estimate. From the same collection here, we have a painting by the 18th century Italian painter Andrea Casali of Joseph interpreting the dreams of the pharaohs Butler and Baker. This Old Testament scene, like I said, comes from the same Philadelphia collection and has an eight dollars to $12,000 estimate. In a slightly different vein, but from the same collection, we have this rather large uh, and dramatic work by the contemporary American painter Vincent Desiderio. This work's titled Studio Latino and depicts a scene from Pinochet's coup in Chile in a rather Caravage-esque manner. You have nude figures flying at dramatic angles. Uh, the nude features really prominently in a lot of Desiderio's work, um, including this piece here, which is a study for the matter of inheritance. Studio Latino has a fifteen dollars to $20,000 estimate, and this study here, this little triptych, has a six dollars to $9,000 estimate. Above that, we have a work from a New York City collection by the Hungarian modernist painter Jula Bathiani. I apologize for my pronunciation there. This work on canvas is typical of Bathiani's work in that he uses these really highly mannered, almost faceless figures in theatrical settings. This piece, which has Hungarian gallery labels affixed verso, has a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar estimate. To the left of that, we have this charming little oil on panel by the now late painter Malcolm Morley, depicting St. Francis of Assisi. This work, which comes out of a Long Island collection, has a three to $5,000 estimate. Down below that, from the same Philadelphia collection as the Desiderios, the Wollaston, and the Casali, is this picturesque landscape from the 18th century English 
landscape artist, William Tompkins. The work which has really tremendous detail. I mean, if you get in there, you can see going back into the distance, a series of different castles and structures, as well as figures fishing in the foreground, crossing a bridge, has an eight to $12,000 estimate. Above that, from a Putnam County collection, we have this oil on board by the Pennsylvania Impressionist Walter Elmer Schofield. Schofield is known for his landscapes, both of Pennsylvania scenes and England, as well as works from later in his career set in the Southwest. This scene here, which may be in California, depicts a Southwestern Arroyo and has a 10 to $15,000 estimate. Vaguely contemporary to the Schofield is this oil on canvas by Yarnell Abbott. From the same Philadelphia collection as a lot of the works in the sale, this painting depicts Philadelphia. This is St. Mark's Church looking up Locust Street in downtown Philadelphia and is full of charming period details, you know, early American automobiles, figures in early 20th century dress. Fun enough, if you look, I've, I've never been to Philadelphia, but if you look on Google Street Views, the street scene is fairly similar to this day. This work has a three to $5,000 estimate. Popping to this wall here, we have a rather large and dramatic oil on burlap by the contemporary German painter Stephanus Heidecker. This came out of an Upper East Side collection and has a 15 to $2,500 estimate. From a Greenwich, Connecticut collection, we have this painting titled The Butterfly Group by the 20th century American figurative painter Leland Bell. Bell rejected abstract painting in the 40s and began to work in a rather flat, um, sort of redacted style of figurative painting. This painting has a four to $6,000 estimate. Here we have a rather striking oil on board by the Austrian painter Helmut Leherbe. From 1961, this painting depicts Leherbe's wife and his rather trademark dove, sort of taking surrealist themes and, and putting them through a 1960s lens. This painting comes from a Pelham collection, has a four to $6,000 estimate, and has been authenticated by the artist's granddaughter, who's the authenticating body over in Austria. Above that, from an Upper East Side collection, we have an ink and wash from the American artist Thomas Hart Benton. From around 1943, this piece is titled The Square Dance, and was created as an illustration for Jesse Stewart's Taps for Private Tussie. Here on page 117, we can see the drawing reproduced. This book is included with the lot, which is estimated at six to 9,000. On the other side of this chest, we have a pair of 3D seriographs from the American artist Fizzino, Charles Fizzino. These depicting police and fire shields have a three to $500 estimate and are a part of a grouping of Fizzinos that I'm gonna to touch on briefly out of a Queens collection. Below that, we have a small oil on canvas by the Cuban artist Lolo Soldevia. From 1954, this work is trademark Soldevia in its constructed use of geometric forms. That work has a 15 to $2,500 estimate. And wrapping up in this gallery from the same Philadelphia collection is a lot of the works that I've already talked about is this allegorical painting by the English-born American painter Thomas Sully. Sully is a bit of a spiritual successor to Gilbert Stuart in that he was perhaps the leading American portraitist in the early half of the 19th century. He painted Andrew Jackson's portrait that then became the uh, you know, inspiration for the $20 bill. This painting has an eight to $12,000 estimate and depicts a nude in his sort of romantic style, reminiscent of Thomas Lawrence. I just want to take the second to point out the few Fizzinos that we have in this sale. They're pretty spectacular ones. Here is a piece depicting Hollywood monsters. It's a special edition seriograph with crystals. Similarly, we have a work here showing Superman and the various characters from his universe. Above that is a piece titled New York, The Wind Beneath Our Wings, which is a really charming depiction of Manhattan. And the last of the Fizzinos is this piece here from the 2013 All-Star Game at City Field. To conclude, I would like to show you uh, a series of works on 
sort of composition board by the Lithuanian-born artist Arbit Blatis. These works, which are a part of a grouping of four interior scenes, are really best seen sort of with a, a person standing next to them to scale because they are, as you can see, quite large. Um, these two, which are a grouping of four, have a $1,000 to $15 estimate, $1,500 estimate, and while these two Parisian scenes have the same estimate. Thanks for watching the video. I encourage you to check out our catalog at www.clarkny.com because I was barely able to skim the surface of the sale, and it is a really, a really tremendous sale. Thanks. Hi, I'm Senko, and I'm going to walk you through our Asian highlights for next Sunday's sale. We're going to start here with this beautiful pair of garden stools. These have a really lovely burl on the top here. Uh, one of them is missing a tiny little piece, but nothing that can't be fixed. And in between them here is this lovely limestone head of Buddha. Uh, the theory is that it is northern chi. It's got that serene expression and very full sort of chubby face that's quite typical of that time period. That has estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Moving on, lovely little pair of chinoiserie candlesticks here in bronze. Charming little figures estimated at eight to 1200. Between them, a terracotta Ming Chi figure. This is a figure of a musician, um, sort of a court jester that would have been used as part of a funeral arrangement. Um, there are two of these. One is, we have this one here standing, beating a drum. The other one in a more dynamic pose. These are estimated also at 1,000 to 1,500. All right, we've got a lovely selection of paintings in this sale. I'm gonna start with this one by Keiichi Okumura. Um, most well known for his woodblock prints, but he has a couple of paintings floating around out there that are these scenes of nature, very sort of ethereal. Um, I, love, I love the colors on this one, the way the reflection takes up most of the, uh, the image. This is a more impressionistic style, typical of the 19th or 20th century in Japan when they're sort of exchanging ideas, artistic ideas with Europe and America. Um, but it is framed in a traditional Japanese uh, scroll mounting. Um, so this is a great example of contemporary art meets traditional, east meets west, and I think it's just a lovely little painting, especially at three to five hundred dollars. Below it, this is a painting by the artist Sujeret, a Thai painter known for painting with uh, a palette knife, really. You'll see these very thick strokes here, these um, large areas of very heavy impasto. There's a little crackleur, but that's sort of to be expected given the thickness of the paint. This one is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Next to it is another one of my favorite watercolors. Uh, this artist has yet to be identified as anything other than Song. We've got that little character right here. This is an inscription. Uh, it's a Tang Dynasty poem by poet Wang Wei, very well-known poem that describes mist in the mountains in the morning. Um, and this type of painting is meant to be an inspiration on a literary reference. Finally, we have this woodblock print by contemporary Japanese artist Junichiro Sekino. Um, much more abstract style here. He did a series on Kyoto rooftops, uh, which is what this is. And I love the color blocking and a traditional subject matter in a more contemporary style. This one is estimated at four to 600. Here we've got a very large jade carving. You may not see the scale of it online, but this thing is quite heavy. Um, it's an alms bowl. It's carved with this beautiful dragon head here and these chulong that are crawling up the sides of it in high relief. Um, really excellently carved, probably early 20th century um, on the underside, which is carved as well. Um, we've got a chenlong mark here, but that looks to be uh, carved after the fact. It's very unlikely that it's Qianlong period. Um, really lovely piece and it comes with a GIA certificate uh, done in 1985. We have confirmation from the GIA that this is indeed one of their reports. 
This is estimated at eight to $12,000. This grouping of porcelain barber's bowls came from Christie's in the early 2000s. These bowls were meant to be held up under the face of whoever was being shaved, um, a very European concept um, meant for export. These bowls are really lovely examples of Chinese imari. I believe they are Yongzheng period. And you'll see all the seals on the bottom, all the collector's um, homes that they've been in. This is a cute little pair of tea caddies, probably late 19th century, have definitely been worn. You'll see the use patterns right here where uh, somebody might have grasped it with their thumb and their fingers come around and wear away at this bird decoration on the other hand here. So this was definitely intended to be functional, um, but they're still beautiful, really lovely despite the wear, um, nice sort of creamy. Uh, orange peel looking glaze um, with a little mark on the underside in iron red. These I have estimated at four to six hundred dollars and they have these beautiful little wooden tops um, and stands down here. Finally another piece in the uh, Buddhist relic realm. Um, this is a lovely figure of Buddha. Lots of age to it. This was lacquered and painted over and most of it has been worn away but you can still see these traces of polychrome the blue in the hair the red and the blue of the robes here um, and the fingers are in relatively good condition considering uh, the apparent age very serene face again it looks like there may have been some sort of rock crystal or jewel and set in the forehead um, but this very high relief sort of chubby face here um, gives it a lot of expression. And then in the back, of course, we have a reliquary that no longer holds anything. This is estimated, I believe, at four to 600. We're gonna finish up here at the front with two of my favorite pieces in the sale. This is a, um, a collage on canvas by Kwok Mang Ho, also known as Frog King Kwok, very quirky graffiti artist from Hong Kong. Um, You'll see his name pop up every once in a while with his froggy glasses. Um, but this is his, his signature, the, the frog eyes, sort of, um, as well as this little guy over here. You'll see this in a lot of his graffiti. Um, excellent work. You'll see it's signed up here, Quok, and then also on the back, um, inscribed and dated with his little graffiti frog as well. This is estimated at seven to $9,000. Finally, we have a beautiful, beautiful Hongmu cabinet inset with jade, 20th century. We've got these dragons coiling on every panel here. Um, and very expressive sort of curling up through the clouds. So we've got the rocks and the waves at the bottom. Um, and just a really nice compound cabinet. This top section unstacks. Um, the previous owners had this separately on the ground. Um, so there's a lot of versatility in this item as well. And this is estimated at four to $6,000. That's gonna be it for our Asian highlights, but there's plenty more online. Take a look, let us know if you have questions. Hi, and welcome to the Jewelry and Silver preview for our September 8th auction. We'll start here with this beautiful German Sterling tea service, six pieces, heavy weight, nearly 300 troy ounces of silver. Um, there is a maker's mark on the bottom. I was unable to identify it, but it's a beautiful service with dancing pooty, floral swags, floral bouquets, really nice craftsmanship to this lot, and it is estimated four to 6,000. And here is an Italian 800 silver pedestal bowl with lid and a carved finial here, so a carved figural finial, applied flowers, a Florentine finish, really a beautiful piece, estimated at six to nine hundred. And the main focus of this sale is going to be a beautiful jewelry collection out of Philadelphia. But we'll start here with some pieces from Greenwich, Connecticut Estate. So we have this contemporary twist on a fetish necklace. 
So we have these inlaid pendants and all of these carved beads, and it's alongside this grouping of Southwest jewelry. So we have a squash blossom necklace, some beautiful silver pieces, so kind of a shadow box design to this cuff bracelet. Two rings, so the inlaid bird and this coral and turquoise ring, and then another hint, um, cuff bracelet. Really quite nice. And moving on to our Philadelphia state, we have this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful South Sea cultured pearl necklace, so graduated in size, and it is accompanied by the GIA report. So this is nice, no indications of treatment, beautiful range of size between about 12 and 14, almost 15 millimeters each. And there's also other paperwork associated with this. So we have um, insurance appraisals, we have the original receipt from Rachel Child in 98, and they paid about 50,000 for these pearls. So they are being offered up with the beautiful diamond, Pave diamond closure at eight to 12,000. Indian jewelry, really one of the nicest examples I've seen. So enamel decorated on the interior also, so that the elephants touching tusks, rose cut diamonds, really nice. So there is a, there's a screw closure here. So I'm not going to take it out only because there's not enough time, but it's beautiful, wonderful condition, estimated at two to 3,000 again out of Philadelphia. Two cocktail rings together, so we have this really nice amethyst ring, kind of an unusual setting. So it's raised up, circular surround, and it's accompanied by this pearl and diamond ring. So again, sweet ring, the two together at four to 600. Opal ring, you can see the wonderful play of color here, surround inlaid with sapphires, rubies, and emeralds, and kind of an open work design. This is at four to 600. High carat bird brooch, I believe that this is a garnet with a little peridot eye. So it's about 900% gold. So it is a higher carat than, than we make here in the US. But beautiful, um, really nice again out of Philadelphia. Cartier Santos watch, so it is stainless with 18 karat gold, sapphire crown, um, it is in working water. So really nice at eight to 1200. Pair of floral earrings with little diamond accents at three to 500. Wonderful 14 karat yellow gold necklace inlaid with five faceted citrines. Oval graduated out in size. This is estimated at four to 600. Some more cocktail rings. So we have this peridot and diamond modernist ring. Really nice. I love these statement rings. A nice aqua, so large in size. Clear, clear no inclusions. Really nice. And one of the stars of this sale, and one of my personal favorites, is this wonderful GIA certified Ceylon Sapphire, so country of origin is Sri Lanka. It's unheated, it's phenomenal, flanked by trapezoidal form Pave diamond panels. Let me just try this on for you because it really is, it's stunning. So it is large, around 29 carats, estimated eight to 12,000. And this also comes with the original receipt. They paid 12,000 for this in 97. Um, it doesn't get better than this. As eight to 12,000, really quite nice. So this is a little Art Deco ring. Again, I might, may or may not have worn this for a few days just around my office. Um, diamond and ruby, geometric design, three to 500, set in 14 karat gold. But really an unusual form, I love it. Mousse de Cartier. Uh, rolling band ring, so it is the, th the tricolor ring, so it's rose gold, white gold, and yellow gold at three to 500. Beautiful, heavy, articulated 18 karat gold necklace. So nice geometric design, beautiful mo movement, which is a testament to quality. Here to sell at 1,000 to 1,500. Double strand pearl necklace with the aqua and diamond closure, kind of in the style of H. Stern, really quite nice. Diamonds are white, clean stones. Again, eight to 1200. Out of Philadelphia again is this Vacheron Constantine and it is in working order, so it keeps time. It's, it's winding, it's beautiful. Uh, band is not original, it's 14 karat gold. Watch itself is 18 karat at two to 3000. So here we have a lovely kind of Rivier style diamond necklace. So it is graduated diamonds, beautiful color, cut quality, everything is here, beautiful. Uh, George Jensen, uh, this is designed by Bent Gabrielson around 1960. So, and this is bracelet number 215. Here to sell, three to 500. 
jade grouping. So we have the celadon jade pendant rotating pendant to the center with the foo dogs around and then the sweet little jade ring. Tahitian pearl earrings. So we have these drop earrings. Let me just hold them up for you so you can see how they fall with the diamond accents. Really elegant with the, the teardrop form pearls. Here to sell it four to six hundred and there's also a Tahitian pearl necklace. So similar to our South Sea necklace only with the, the Tahitian color. Antique drop necklace, really unusual, absolutely stunning. So we have the, the teardrop form pendants on these drop chains, all diamond inlays on this really petite chain, and this is here to sell at five to seven thousand. Another nice piece in this sale out of the Philadelphia estate is this butterfly brooch. So this is in tremblant, so it is the French style of in tremblant. So you can see that the, the wings wiggle, and it's inlaid with diamonds, sapphires, ruby eyes, and a single emerald. So really beautiful. Look at how wonderfully crafted this is with the little springs on the underside at two to 3,000. So this does also come with a chain, but this is a jadeite jade pendant set in 14 karat gold. Really nice with the GIA that I obtained. So that's here at four to 600. And one of the stars of this sale is this Geraldo Burl Marks Sweet 18 karat gold with the freeform carved tourmalines. So this is a significant Brazilian artist. Uh, I mean, the necklace speaks for itself. But what I really wanted you to take a look at is these stones. So if you can see how they're carved, they're not just cabochons, they're multi-tiered. So what he essentially did was made a small pendant to set into the bale, and then he carved the stone on top. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. It's beautiful, the gold work is wonderful, uh, more contemporary feel, it does come with the earrings. So these are also equally wonderful, um, well matched, again with the, the free form carved and polished tourmalines, and this is here to sell at eight to 12,000. And just in yesterday, we have this wonderful wedding suite. So we have the engagement ring. It's 1.99 carats, F color, VS2 quality, no fluorescence. And you can see here, if you just take a look at the GIA report, um, the any inclusions, any characteristics are all in the surround, so nothing is reaching the table. So I'm just gonna put this on my finger real quick so you can just see how wonderful this is. With the tapered baguettes on each side, and it is accompanied by the wedding band. So each set in platinum, I mean really a beautiful suite. This is here at 15 to 20,000. Um, this is kind of a little couture grouping. So we have Tiffany and Onyx earrings, a little Tiffany and 18 karat gold ring, and then the Chanel belt. So with the double C logo. Beautiful, beautiful earrings. So they are comprised of the round brilliant cuts and the tapered baguettes, kind of this crescent moon form, but they're really quite nice vintage pieces, but with a contemporary feel to them, estimated at 1,500 to 2,000. Art Deco, Tiffany & Company Platinum Pocket Watch, open face pocket watch. Um, it does keep time, it's in good condition. There's a little monogram verso. There are photographs of the movement and all of those good details on our website. Um, and then this is a 19th century Thomas Parker pocket watch. So I was actually educated yesterday on all the details of this by a very nice gentleman. And so here is the movement. So I can't get it to, to run as of yet, but there is some movement so it's not stuck. Um, and this is quite nice one of our older pieces in this sale. And it does come with the exterior case. Hamilton vintage 14 karat gold pocket watch with a subsidiary second style, four to 600. 14 karat gold twisted rope chain with the kind of pineapple form terminals and the tassels. Interesting necklace at four to 600. Again, out of our Philadelphia state, we have the Sapphire and Diamond Edwardian French Bracelet. Um, and actually these sapphires, they are from the United States. So they're from the Yogo Gulch, which is quite interesting. And there is no indications of heating. So kind of a similar color to the Ceylon Sapphire, um, but from the US. And this is estimated at four to 6,000. Moving on to some more contemporary pieces, Italian 18 karat gold Florentine finish braided bracelet. Grouping of cocktail rings, all individually being sold. 
So we have this platinum and diamond band. I mean, easy to wear. Really nice to just put on and it's a, a great statement ring. We have the Victorian double snake with the two diamond accents. This is David Yerman. So one of his pieces, again, really nice to throw on it. looks great with the central diamond band. Kind of in the style of Buccellati. So we have this open work floral design to the center panel, flanked by rubies and diamonds. Citrine, maybe I'll just put all of them on. So this large faceted citrine flanked by the diamonds. Again, a great look to it. I like all of these rings together. A uh, little sweet, three piece sweet, 18 karat yellow gold, kind of uh, folio amoeba design to these pieces with, the, with clusters of diamonds. Um, these three together at five to 700. Nice little pave diamond hoops. So again, something that's just easy to wear. So just throw these on, three to 500. Beautiful Victorian double heart, peridot and garnet with the di rose cut diamond surround. I love this. I love the older pieces. Um, and this is gold that's dipped in silver. So this is in the style of H. Stern, these Sputnik earrings, faceted gems, all colored stones, pierced ears, 18 karat gold. One of my personal favorites in the sale, these diamond earrings, so the older cut, rose cuts. Um, I might come back to these and put one of them on so you can just see how beautiful they are. Estimated 15 to 2,500, again, out of Philadelphia. So a miscellaneous grouping of diamonds. So we have two little diamond rings, a diamond cross. This is really nice also. I'm running out of fingers, but we have the onyx flanked by these little shoulders of di pave diamonds, but really pretty. And then here we have a little petite round cut diamond in this more contemporary pendant. And we have emeralds and diamonds. So really beautiful, the, the marquee diamonds flanked by oval cut emeralds. And again, something so easy to throw on and really quite beautiful in design. This is an 18 karat gold Italian necklace Byzantine link. So, so easy to throw on with black or any color really. White t-shirt, jeans, dress it up a little bit. Um, out of a Connecticut estate, we have this Vacheron Constantine watch, 18 karat gold with original odor. So we have the, the ephemera with it, so the paperwork. Um, this is the reference number, all of this is available online. It does not have the original band, but this one's nice also. And here we have a little diamond inlaid ring, so really quite nice at three to 500. Pair of Bulgari earrings. So we have these heart form amethyst set in 18 karat gold, fully marked on the underside. Another amethyst slot in the sale really a, an unusual ring. So we have these cabochon style amethysts, polished um, channel set flanked by bands of diamond accents, eight to 1200. Cool grouping that I like, little English silver pocket knife. And then we have this little coin purse or vinaigrette, I should say. And there was one other thing that goes with this grouping and a gold coin. So then we have this 1865 British Sovereign. This is an Hermes gold tone scarf clip. So if you were to wear a scarf around your neck, this would just be the closure opposed to tying it. Um, 18 karat gold organic form brooch set with emeralds and diamonds. Universal watch, ladies watch, really nice. Not so small of a face, but look how nice that looks with my bracelets. I love multiple wrist adornments. Another significant item in the sale is this 22.39 Colombian Emerald. And this was given a grading of F1, which is minor clarity enhancements. Um, if you can just take a look here. So it's significant. It's a large stone, beautiful, beautiful color. Um, there are the typical emerald inclusions, but it does not detract from the, the beauty of this stone. And if you look over here, it is originally have been set in this necklace. So, so this triple strand flanked by diamonds, diamond accents to the, to the bars here, really beautiful, estimated at 30 to 50,000. Coming back to this Cartier bracelet. So it is one of the older pieces with the, the original screwdriver. So you can see the screw design. It is inscribed to the interior. All the markings are here also. And that information is available online, estimated at two to 3,000. Another pearl necklace in the sale. So we have this green tourmaline with double diamond surround. Really pretty, triple strand. Jeté, 
hidden watch face, 14 karat gold, diamond accents, beautifully articulated and in very good condition. Uh, we have a grouping of Landvin. So this is costume jewelry, but of the utmost quality. One is from France, one is from Italy. We have a large bracelet, beautiful statement pieces, and then this necklace. So I like that the clasp is off kilter. So really nice with the coral design. We have a antique Edwardian diamond tennis bracelet so it is bezel set beautiful quality of the stones really quite nice again out of philadelphia at five to seven thousand victorian 14 karat gold necklace and then the clasp here is set with three little carved coral cameos really wonderful again a thousand to fifteen hundred and we'll end here with this diamond and ruby cabochon bracelet so again with the gia so these are thai rubies um and they were heated, but only minor treatments. So if you see here, really, again, wonderful. The rubies are set in yellow gold, diamonds are set in white gold, another testament to quality. Um, and I think that that wraps it up for the jewelry and silver. Of course, there are many more lots available online, and we hope to see you on September 8th.